David here with Figboot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a pen from Auto Hut. Uh, over the last few months, I have had the opportunity to share with you some of their more expensive models, uh, but what I have for you today is one of their pens which I would describe as having a more standard price compared to some of the other mid-range pens out there, and that would be their Design 4. Uh, it comes in a number of variations, but the one I have for you today is the Blue Wave. Uh, I also have the Black Guilloche model here as well, uh, but I'll give you a closer look at that a little later during the review. Thanks go out to Kenro Industries, U.S. distributor for Auto Hut, for providing these pens on loan for review. The pen arrives in this box, and inside the sleeve comes off, and then this lifts off, and we have a whole bunch of stuff. First of all, let me take the pen and the tray out here. There is a warranty card. There is a little use and care guide. There is a polishing cloth, which comes in hand for this pen. And finally, there are two cartridges, one empty and one full. It's nice to have an empty cartridge because if you use a syringe, you could fill it with the ink of your choice. Uh, originally, these were in the barrel of the pen and the converter was in the box. And speaking of the pen, here it is, the Auto Hut Design 4 Blue Wave. Now, in regard to the naming convention for Auto Hut pens, while there are a couple of exceptions, in general, the lower the design number, the lower the price of the pen. There is a Design 1, which retails for around $140, all the way up to the Design 8, which retails for about $1,200. Um, I'll discuss price near the end of this review, but this Design 4 is closer to the lower end of that scale. Um, overall, this pen is a bit on the thin side, it's made from metal, I'm assuming brass, with everything other than the barrel plated in chrome. The distinguishing feature of the Blue Wave is the engraving on the barrel. Now, there's an outer coating on the barrel, so you don't feel the engraving. The exterior is round and smooth, but I really like the patterning of the engraving. Auto Hut posted a picture of the engraving process on their Instagram. Uh, you could see here six pens being engraved at the same time. Now, this pattern is seemingly random. At first glance, no two lines look the same. It took me a while while examining it, but I did find that the engraving is actually a smaller pattern repeated three times around the barrel. Now, it was very hard to see the duplicating pattern, and what made it harder was that you can't see any of the duplication when looking at the pen from any particular angle. Um, I'm fascinated by the technical execution of design elements like this, and I feel they executed this aspect very well. It looks really sharp. Let's take a look at the top of the cap. The top is engraved with the Auto Hut logo. Uh, the end of the cap has a rounded flare. Now, I'll show it during the size comparisons, but the Design 4 is very similar in shape and size to the Faber-Castell Anello. Uh, there are plenty of differences between the two, one being that this flare is significantly more pronounced on the Faber-Castell. Uh, then we have the clip. It is squared off and straight with a medium-sized profile. The cap is chrome-plated metal, which will attract smudges and fingerprints, which is why the included polishing cloth is handy. But I don't find this coating to be a fingerprint magnet, so it's better than most in those regards. At the end of the cap, there is a groove, giving the impression of a traditional cap band, and then the transition to the barrel is fairly smooth. If anything, there's a microscopic step up to the barrel. Very, very small. The barrel is straight, and then at the end, there is a chrome-plated piece, and the very end is slightly rounded. The cap twists off in two and three quarters rotations, and underneath we have this two-tone stainless steel nib. Uh, I care for the Auto Hut nib stamping. I think it looks really clean and professional. Uh, the nib is a bit on the small side, but it's size appropriate for the thin width of this pen. I find this medium nib to be very smooth. Uh, the nib for this pen is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. There is also a gold nib option available. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a rounded flare and angles up until you reach the squared off threads and a two-tiered step up to the barrel. 
the section is a bit on the thin side, as is the rest of the pen. Uh, while this section is metal, I'm not a huge fan of metal sections. Uh, I do find the usability of this particular one to be acceptable. Um, the rate of ascent is steep enough and the flare at the end is large enough that I don't find my grip slipping or traveling down the section during use. The Design 4 is long enough to comfortably use unposted. Um, the cap does post. Uh, it doesn't post deeply, but it is secure. With the metal cap and the increased length of this pen when posted, I do find the cap back weights things a bit and throws off the balance, so I prefer to use this pen unposted. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is included as well. Um, with all of the metal in this pen, eye dropping would not be recommended. Uh, the Auto Hut Design 4 Blue Wave is available from a number of online and brick and mortar retailers and sells for $280. Uh, this model is also available with a gold nib and that version is $420. Um, I feel that those price points are appropriate for what this pen brings to the table. Uh, with Kenro now distributing this brand here in the U.S., a larger number of retailers have been carrying it, uh, at least some of these models from this brand. And I feel that that's a good thing. There have been aspects of each of their pens that I've reviewed which I really care for. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. With some size comparisons for the Auto Hut Design 4 Blue Wave. I just wanted to give you another look at those uh, the engraving on here. I just think it's really cool. I think it's a really nice look to it. I had mentioned that I had another one. This is the Black Guilloche model. This one is a little bit more expensive. This is $315, but it has a nice solid black look to it. A nice Guilloche finish here on the barrel. Uh, and then it also has a black nib and a black section. So this one is worth checking out as well. That's what it looks like next to the Blue Wave. And in regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with a Pelican M805. Uh, and then here it is with a Shone Design Ultim, which I reviewed just a couple of weeks ago. Then we have it in comparison to a Pilot Decimo. This is a Gravitas Entry. And then finally, I had mentioned right off the bat that I felt that it looked a little similar to the Faber-Castell Anello. And you can see here that the cap is just a little bit more flared on that, but it has a, an overall uh, somewhat similar look, even though the Anello is a little bit larger all the way around. And for uncapped comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like with the Shone Design Ultim. And this is the Faber-Castell Anello. And here it is with the Pelican M805. Here we go with the writing sample for the Auto Hut. And this is the Design 4. Blue Wave. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. And the ink I'm using today is from Paniter and is their turquoise. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's a nice turquoise. Uh, here it is compared to Visconti turquoise. Visconti's is a little bit deeper and more saturated. Uh, and then here it is with the Papier Plume Peacock Blue. So you can see it's somewhat similar in color, but the Paniter has a bit more shading to it. This is what the bottle looks like. It's very similar to the Diamine bottles, but a little bit different. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, 
Um, I mentioned before, but this medium nib is very smooth. I'm really liking this auto hub nib. Um, you can get a little bit of line variation if you push it. Uh, the ink flow for this pen is decent in regard to reverse writing. It is a little bit sharp in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up just fine. So there you have the Auto Hut Design for Blue Wave. Um, I just really like the looks of this pen. I really like the looks of the barrel. I think it's unique uh, and I just think it's very eye-catching. So I think it's a really good addition to their lineup. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.